Good morning or afternoon, everyone, depending on where you are in Australia. Um, thanks for joining us for today's webinar, where we'll be comparing the cost of harvest weed seed control tools. Today, we're joined by WeedSmart's Western Extension agronomist, Peter Newman, who will be taking you through today's presentation. Um, before I hand over to Pete, I would like to say a thank you to our stakeholders here at WeedSmart. We're an industry-funded communications project um, delivering science-backed weed control solutions. So all of the companies that you can see above the line are our financial contributors and everybody below the line are our in-kind stakeholders. Um, if you have any questions during this presentation, please um, utilise the Q&A box at the bottom of your toolbar. And thanks, Pete, I'll hand over to you. Righto, thanks, Shannon. I'll just uh, get my screen sharing happening. And as you can hear the birds in the background, I'm working from home. Okay, hello everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. And as I promised in the tweet, I want to jump straight into um, the webinar this morning and straight into the cost of harvest weed seed control. There's a whole lot of information on the background of all the different tools. Um, I'm not going to do that today. I really just want to focus on the on the costs and how we work out that, calculate that cost, and and show you uh, a couple of examples. So. Um, Let's jump straight into it. So I should point out with the cost of harvest weed seed control is when we've done it in the past, we've written our insights and so on, and we've done an average farm and worked out, you know, for an average farm for average yields, this is your cost. And essentially I'll be doing that today, but I've also created a spreadsheet which you can download, use yourself and work out the cost of harvest weed seed control for you or your clients. So that's the difference today. We've, we're working with uh, an interactive spreadsheet and, and things change a lot. So I did this presentation in the uh, crop updates around the country in February. Uh, and since then, some, there's been some significant changes in terms of information about say the cost of the mills, um, the, the wearing parts that is, and the life of those mills. And so it is a moving space. And so we need to be able to update those figures and get the most accurate uh, cost. So the first thing to do, we're just, I'm just only at this point looking at the capital cost of, uh, of the mills. Uh, a lot of this today is focused on the different mills, but I will be talking about the other costs of the other harvest weed seed control tools a little bit later on. Um, but there is the a rough sort of fitted capital cost of the different mills. So we've got the weed hog in the top left, looking like being around about $60,000. Um, so the lower cost and lower kill mill. Uh, vertical HSD in the middle, they retail at 85,000 and uh, they tell me that it can be anywhere from 90 to 92,000 fitted, depending on the make of the harvester. So these are fitted costs we're trying to estimate here. The ready cop teamed up with the Mav chopper, capital cost around about 110,000 and only a couple of thousand dollars to fit. And the Terminator, Retail roughly 110 to 115,000, and then uh, some slightly different fitting costs depending on the make of harvester. So, uh, in rough figures, that $120,000 fitted. So, one of the my observations has been that a lot of what we've spoken about over the recent years when we're comparing the mills is what matters to people like me and research and so on. We spent a lot of time talking about the seed kill percent and capital cost. And they're certainly very important factors. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to play them down. However, I sort of noticed that the farmers have a longer list and maybe a different order of priority. Um, so they want to know, will it slow me down? What are the wear rates like? Will it block? What's the capital cost, of course? What's it like to maintain uh, and service? How much do the replacement mills cost? What sort of support have I got? And seed kill. Now, that's not necessarily a, pri a priority order. Seed kill is what this game is all about. So it is all about killing seeds. But what I really have noticed is that the farmers just have a lot of other things to focus on because, of course, they are trying to harvest a crop and they don't want too many interruptions uh, to that. So let's have a look at... Uh, I'm going to go to a spreadsheet in a minute to look at the calculate the cost of harvest weed seed control. And let's just break it down and I'll, and I'll share with you how I've calculated those different costs. So for the cost of ownership, uh, we take the capital cost 
and we multiply that by the depreciation plus the interest. So it seems to me whichever way I do this, there's an economist that tells me I'm doing it a little bit wrong, but most people tend to agree that this is okay. So for example, if something cost $100,000 uh, to buy, then it would be $14,000 per year um, for ownership cost, and then you've got to average out that $14,000 over the area of the farm. That 10% depreciation is a typical figure that is used for ag machinery by ag consultants. We don't know if that's the figure for, um, for the different harvest weed seed control tools, um, but we're just using that, that average figure that gets used. And look, it should be pretty close. I'd like to think these things are gonna last 10 years or more. Uh, extra fuel. So the Condinan Group recently did a, a report looking at comparing the different um, mills. So when we're talking the mills, the extra fuel is roughly about a litre per tonne of wheat harvested. So we're talking about fuel use per tonne of grain, not necessarily extra fuel per hectare. So, and the, so that's the sort of the three main mills. The weed hog is a lower horsepower mill and would suggest that maybe, well, the figures I've used is that it would have about half the extra um, fuel that the other mills are taking. The, we get a range of answers to this. So it is half a litre to one and a half litres of fuel extra per tonne of grain for a mill. Chaff cart, a rough estimate there is about an extra half a litre. Um, well, that's per hectare, I've said there. Uh, and the other tools like windrow burning, uh, chaff deck, chaff line, etc. cetera, um, there should be no extra cost of fuel. So when I'm talking extra fuel here, I'm only talking about fuel to run the mill or tow the chaff cart. I'm not talking about extra fuel to cut low to capture weed seeds. I just suggest that that is a given. The nutrient costs are important when we're considering all of those tools that um, can remove nutrients from the paddock. So windrow burning being the biggest one of those as is bale direct. So we need to consider how much, how many nutrients are contained within the chaff or straw and then put a value on that and then work out how many dollars worth of nutrients we are removing. So these figures here are from a study that I did, it must be uh, pushing 10 years ago now, and there will get variations in this, but this is what I found when I went and sampled chaff heaps and windrows from around the wheat belt up here. Sent it off, CSBP were good enough to um, chip in and uh, have it uh, analysed for me. And that is a, just some good averages of, of how many units of the various nutrients there are per tonne of residue. Uh, now, just on that, when we're talking about the mills, one of the big sales pitches is that they are returning all of the nutrients back to the paddock. Now, it is important that if we're going to claim that, that they are spreading that chaff evenly back over the paddock. So this is a, a tricky one. Obviously we know that chaff is very light, it's very hard to get it to spread the full 12 metres. Some of the mills are probably gonna be better than others at getting that chaff to spread out the full 12 metres. So if, for example, the chaff was all destroyed but being dumped in a line behind the header, it's like a wide chaff line and there would be a cost of nutrients because if the header is running in the same place every year. Whereas if we are either moving the harvester around from year to year or um, we are managing to spread it evenly, then there should be no cost of nutrients for a, uh, one of the mills. So it's an important point to make and I think when you're looking at different mills you need to have a look at that chaff spread because if we are claiming that um, the benefit of these things is that we're returning the nutrients we need to return them evenly. Now harvest capacity is another, another aspect here and this is particularly with the mills again. We hear that people have a reduced harvest capacity anywhere from zero to 25%. Now the cost of harvest is significant. Not a lot of people carry that number around in their head, but if we talk to contractors or talk to farmers that have really accurately costed out their cost of harvest, and that includes the chaser bin, uh, it can be 350 to anywhere up to $650 per hour to run a harvester in a chaser bin. Now obviously that depends on um, your yield. So the, uh, 
the size of the crop going into it, um, the age of the harvester, the capital tied up in it and so on. And so, yeah, but um, it, is a, it is a cost. Now last year was, 2019 was harvest was probably the first year where we had a lot of mills running. We, I mean, there was a lot in 2018 as well, but 2019 was a year when we had a lot of mills. Around the country, most people had below average yields, in some cases very poor yields, and so most people reported no um, reduction in harvest capacity. So, uh, whereas when we get into more average yields, um, that will test us. People that have had a mill for a few years have commented anywhere up to, some people even that 25% reduction in harvest capacity, but commonly around that 10%. Does just slow them down a little bit. One of the other costs for the mills is the cost of uh, the replacement parts, the wearing parts. Now this is a moving feast. I did this presentation in uh, February, as I said, and since then there's been some changes to these costs. HSD say that it's 9,500 now, that's recommended retail price. They will tell us that you know uh, the retailer might put uh, some extra on top of that. So I've only pretty well gone with the recommended retail prices. You might um, see some slight differences to these. Seed Terminator. 16,446, cop 18,000 or so, and weed hog looking like being about 4,000 to replace the wearing parts. Now, the, the mill life varies between these things. HSD, the average mill life, is somewhere around 375 to 400 hours. In most cases, um, growers are swapping out the, uh, the rotors and stators at the same time. And so they're replacing that entire mill. Seed terminator mill life is, uh, well, it's, the screens can be around about 500 hours, but the rotors and flails can be around 1,000 hours. So it's an extra uh, cost of the replacement parts there, but supposedly uh, a longer mill life, and therefore a, um, it, it, you'll see in a moment that it works itself out in terms of that cost per hectare for wearing parts. The ready cop, the most expensive of the, of the mills to replace, it's got the tungsten coating and so on on there. And important to note that they can be flipped from one side to another when they are half worn, effectively doubling the life of the mill. The weed hog is a completely different setup altogether. It has uh, blades that are replaced. I think that's the right term, Tom, that they are. Uh, that they are blades and they can be reversed to wear out both sides. So estimated, and it's very much an estimate, 500 hours um, and only $4,000 to replace. Some variations are only $3,000 to replace those parts, just depending what blades they go for. Okay, so I'm going to switch over now. I'll, I'll open it up to any questions um, as I do this switch. If you have a question, please ask it now, either in the chat box or you could try unmuting yourself. But I'm going to switch over to the spreadsheet and have a look, if I can find it, at the cost of harvest weed seed control. Here we are. Okay, Shannon, you should have that on your screen now. Hopefully you've seen the spreadsheet. Yep, I can uh, see that. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, have any questions come into the chat box before I go on? Yeah, we have got one about depreciation costs. Um, what's the impact of trade-in value on depreciation costs? Um, well, trade-in value will determine your depreciation costs. So I guess we will find out eventually um, what the true depreciation cost is. So um, we know the depreciation of most ag machinery averages 10% based on the buy price versus the um, trade-in price later on. We don't know that for the mills yet. Um, and so we're working on 10% at the moment. If anyone has a better estimate, then that would be great. But look, I'm, I'm, I think it's a little academic, for example, you know, an SP boom spray might depreciate at 20% per year, even 25. A harvester might be 15 to 17%, whereas a seeding bar might be 5%. And so what the ag consultants do is really average it out across all the machines. 
and uh, and work on that 10%. So I think it's fair enough to work on 10% um, here. Any other questions? Nope, that's it for now. Thanks, Shannon. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet. It can be downloaded. It's a tiny bit tricky to find at the moment, but we will make it a bit more visible. It's both on the WeedSmart website and on the RE Insight that I did last September on the Cost of Harvest Weed Sea Control. The latest version is in both of those places. Um, so what we do is we look at our crop area with some average yields. Now, I will ask if there's anyone out there, if you would like to volunteer to give us your crop area and yields, we can do the calculation for you. I'll just run through this one for now, but if someone would like to volunteer for that, raise your hand now and uh, or um, put something in the chat box and Shannon will work out how to unmute you so you can give us some numbers in a minute. So I've just done this with probably a medium rainfall Western Australian farm in mind, 2,000 hectares of, of cereal doing two and a half tonnes per hectare, 1,000 hectares of legumes um, going 1.8 and 1,000 hectares of canola going 1.5. So the reason we need those yields is to work out this value of nutrients per tonne of grain. So I've also said that this is 4,000 hectares with one harvester. 8,000 tonnes of grain with one harvester should be achievable. It's probably a little bit of a stretch, but um, it should be relatively achievable. You can tell me whether that's realistic. In here, I've got some typical fertiliser prices. You can change these as you get different fertilizer prices. I think these are relatively accurate for now. And we use those to calculate the dollars per unit for all the different uh, nutrients. And then that table that I showed you earlier with the different amounts of nutrient per uh, tonne of residue, uh, we use that to work out the value of nutrients per tonne of straw or chaff. Up here, you'll also see that we have the Grain, the chaff yield is a percentage of grain yield. Now this came from Michael Walsh. Mike has um, studied this stuff quite a bit from, this is particularly from a chaff lining study, I think, and found that roughly the chaff yield is a third of grain yield. So if we're harvesting a one tonne per hectare wheat crop, we're getting 330 kilos of chaff um, coming out of the back of the harvester. Now, when I measured this years ago, it was about half that. But having said that, Mike's uh, measuring techniques are probably more accurate than mine. And so I'd probably back this one in. But anyway, this might be a number that uh, changes with more um, research and could also change with different harvest setup. Down here, we have that depreciation and interest cost. The harvest cost per hour. Now, you'll need to put this in. I've put in just a bit of a middle of the road figure there. This is probably for a secondhand harvester. Um, you know, if it was a brand new harvester, it's probably more in that five to six hundred dollar range, uh, and that includes the chaser bin. And I've also put in a harvest rate per hour, so 12 hectares an hour, and that works out in this case at about 30 tonnes per hour, and that's averaged across these crops really. So we might be harvesting faster than that in cereal and slower than that in the other crops. And I also just calculated there how many, what the total hours of harvest is 600 odd hours just to see whether it's realistic to do the calculation for one harvester. And that's probably a bit of a stretch, but that's what I've done in this example. Got a fuel cost, um, which is probably a little bit high at the moment. Uh, the extra fuel set at one litre per tonne of grain and a 10% reduction in harvest capacity. So also for the mills, I've got the wearing parts here. So as I've already indicated, we've got the different costs of the different mills and the mill life. So HSD, as I said, is estimated about 400 hour mill life. The ready cop mills are saying about 400 hours on each side. Now you will get variation of this. I mean, some people have worn these things out in 150 hours in lentils or uh, 250 hours in sandy lupins, that sort of thing. So look, there's variation. This is uh, an average. Some people are getting 700 hours out of a set of HSD mills, so there is a range. So that's average HSD life. Ready cop 800 because we're flipping them over. Now Terminator offset at 750. I've contacted Seed Terminator. 
they told me that uh, we can work on about 500 hours for the screens and about a thousand hours for the rotor and flails. And so I've sort of averaged that to 750 hours, if you like, for the total cost of the mills. Uh, and weed hog estimate 500 hours for that $4,000. Now, I should point out that with these estimates, it is a little tricky for all of these companies because um, last year, you know, every year they, they've been working on better mills that wear better. Last year was the first year with a lot of these mills. And so some of them aren't worn out yet um, from that first harvest. So they don't actually know exactly how long they might last. So, so this is our best estimate at the moment. So anyway, with all of that and all of the nutrient costs here, you know, the magic numbers, the the cost of harvest weed seed control for all of the tools now. I've focused a lot on the mills so far, so let's talk about all of the tools now. First, let's just do a quick overview. You can see narrow windrow burning, expensive. Everything else, you know, just about everything in that $12 to $13 range, with the exception of the chaff cart being a bit more, and bale direct being very expensive because it is uh, high capital cost and high nutrient removal and weed hog being cheaper. Uh, keeping in mind that weed hog is going to be about an 85% mill as it stands at the moment in terms of kill, whereas the other mills are in the high 90s. And so it is cheaper, but not as high a seed kill as the other mills at, at present. Uh, so let's just dig into it a little bit more. So for the narrow windrow burn, I've just gone for low capital cost, assuming someone builds their own windrow shoot, and this is the nutrient removal because it is all the chaff and straw, and so higher cost of nutrient removal. Now we're assuming that the harvest is going in the same place every year, so while the new, a lot of the nutrients stay in the paddock, um, the nitrogen goes up in smoke and the potassium largely stays behind, it is in narrow strips, and so we are depleting the paddock, so we do need to replace those nutrients. So that is just about all nutrient cost. Chaff lining, in this, for this scenario, that is just about all nutrient cost as well, because $5,000, that's assuming, for example, West Oz boiler making chaff kit, which is purchased, which is uh, one of the only commercial ones available uh, at $5,000, and then over, you know, with the depreciation of that, that's $500 a year depreciation. So the cap, the ownership costs per hectare ends up being very low. So chaff lining, that is just about all nutrient cost of just the chaff. So it's, it's about a bit less than half the nutrient cost of windrow burning because it is just the chaff. Chaff deck is that amount of nutrient cost plus whatever that works out to be, about 60%, 60 cents per hectare uh, of ownership because it is uh, roughly an 18, I've put $18,000 there. They range from 15 to 20,000, I think fitted um, depending on the make of harvester they're going on and so low um, capital cost low ownership cost and that is really nutrient removal chaff cart has um, a higher capital cost and then this same level of as chaff lining and chaff deck for the um, nutrient removal so around that $18 per hectare, assuming a new chaff cart at $60,000, if you were to purchase a, a second hand one, and we can do that right now, let's say you bought one for $30,000, um, it just brings back the cost a little. Also a little bit of extra fuel cost there to tow the chaff cart. And then let's look at the mills. So the HSD, Seed Terminator and the Redicop, even though they have pretty big uh, we're well not big, but they have differences in capital costs over here. Uh, they are relatively similar in terms of their cost per hectare, $12.15 to $12.98. Um, I think I probably should point out that we've got our wearing parts cost up here, even though we've got the different costs of the different um, wearing parts here, the, even the different mill life, they all really, in this example, came out around about that $2 per hectare. So fairly similar um, cost of wearing parts uh, across, across all of the mills. And for that reason, the wearing parts cost is similar. We've got no nutrient cost assumed in here, and we have um, difference in capital costs, so slight difference in ownership. But really, it, what this does is it shows that 
The cost of harvest weed seed control, for this example, I should point out, can be similar across a range of tools. And so it, it will come down to other things that help you decide whether which, which tool to go for. Yeah, for the mills, it could be service, it could be um, how easy the machine is to service, it could be what you learn about blockages, it could be something to do with what you learn about does it slow harvest. It's all of those other attributes of the mills. These three mills here at the moment, we are, um, it's reported that they're all giving a pretty similar weed control uh, in the 95 to 99% seed kill. On that, we are working with these companies and we're looking to do an independent test across all of them. I've contacted all the companies now and they've all agreed to be involved in independent testing. So we'll be able to set up an independent test and, and confirm exactly what uh, we're finding with that um, seed kill. And I think we'll, I think we'll probably find that, that everyone's reported it pretty accurately, I would imagine. There'll be some slight differences because there's slight difference in seed test protocol out there but I would think that they'll all end up being in a ballpark. The weed hog, we know um, Tom has done his own testing so far and it's in that 80 to 85% seed kill um, at, at this point in time. There's obviously room for improvement there. It is lower horsepower, lower capital cost, lower wearing parts cost, and hence the, the lower overall cost per hectare. And Bale Direct, expensive tool, expensive capital, expensive nutrients, but if you have a market for the bales, um, then uh, you can hopefully get all of that back and more. But really, that suits uh, growers that are, are nearby a big market for straw bales. So that is an overview. This spreadsheet's available for download. As things change, as any of the prices or wearing parts or anything changes, we will um, continue to update it uh, and, and put the latest this version on, online for you to download, but that's there to help you make this rational part of the decision. There's a lot to do with decision making with harvest weed seed control, choosing the right tool for you. This is really summing up that, that rational cost comparison. So I'll throw it open to questions there, Shannon, if there's any. I'm not sure if there's any showing up in the chat box or, um, or if someone can unmute and give us their figures and we'll put their numbers in. I haven't had any volunteers yet, unfortunately. Um, I'm not, so I've noticed that your estimate's based on a medium um, rainfall zone. Is it possible to see some other scenarios in lower or higher rainfall zones? Yeah, okay, Shannon, good idea. So um, let's go with a low rainfall zone, for example. So let's say there's, um, what we say, 3,000 hectares at uh, 1.5 tonnes per hectare cereal maybe 500 hectares of legumes at say a tonne and 500 hectares of canola at say 0.8 for example. So we've got lower um, tonnage of grain, there'll be lower nutrient costs associated obviously. Um, nutrients are the same. Okay, the harvest rate per hour, I will increase to let's call it 15 hectares an hour. Um, could go even higher than that by the look of this. Um, that's, I don't know if people harvest much higher than that. Let's call it 18, get it up to 27 tonnes an hour. That's a pretty quick harvest rate, I think, but someone might be able to help me out there. Same fuel, extra fuel, a litre per tonne. I'm gonna say it's 0 0.5 litres of extra fuel because they are lower yielding crops. Um, wearing parts the same, and then if we go down here, uh, the mills are in that $9 per hectare range, weed hog $6, chaff line, chaff deck, $8.850, chaff cart, $13 odd dollars. Um, if anyone would like to dispute any of that, go for your life now. Let's look at a higher rainfall farm that is say a lower area, say 1,500 hectares, at say 3.5 tonnes, uh, the legume could be, um, let's leave the area the same and say it's 2.5 tonnes and the canola uh, 1.8 tonnes per hectare. So higher, smaller area, higher yields, um, 
harvest rate per hour will be back around 10 hectares an hour, perhaps. And we'll put that fuel back at one litre and have a look here. So now everything is in that 17 odd dollars per hectare. Windrow burning, still expensive because of the nutrients. Chaff cut, slightly more expensive. Weed hog, cheaper um, because of all the factors I've already mentioned. I will, one I'd, when I was in South Australia, um, they said we're small farms uh, growing high yielding crops. Um, they were growing lots of legumes, lots of lentils, um, and they were wearing the mills out faster. Uh, let's say, uh, yeah, leave the canola at that, maybe uh, 2.5 tonnes of canola, or let's just call it two. Um, and so they said um, the harvest rate per hour is slower and extra fuel. They said, look, we might be higher fuel. And they said, we think that the, um, we might reduce our harvest, our harvest capacity might be 20% and the mills are wearing out on lentils. So if we halve all of these, so we only get 200 hours for a set of, halve all of these for the mill life. Um, this is a, an example I did in Balaclava when I was in South Australia. All of a sudden, the, um, the, the mills get pretty expensive, around the 30 bucks a hectare. Now, we don't know if we were being a bit harsh there, but there certainly have been people wearing mills out quickly on lentils. Um, and they just said, look, we, we, might get, we might be slowed down more because we're higher yielding crops. And so I think what this allows you to do is just do some scenarios, do some best case and worst case scenarios for you. Any other questions there, Shannon? Yeah, I've just had one come through. Um, if you're always dropping your chaff on the same track, it's not really available to the rest of the paddock. So shouldn't there be a nutrient removal figure for it as, for it as only a small line receiving those nutrients. So that is exactly right. So the chaff line cost here is pretty much the nutrient cost. It's because it's not available to the whole paddock and uh, that's why there's a cost of chaff line. And I'm not sure if what they're getting at is talking about the mills, if they're saying if the mills aren't spreading the chaff, the full 12 metres, there should be a cost of nutrients there and I did allude to that earlier and I agree. So if if you're looking at a at one of the mills and you think that's not spreading 12 metres, then maybe we need to put a, a cost of nutrients for the mills as well. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. Rightio. So I might just flick back to my um, to my slides, uh, Shannon and just finish off with a couple of slides. I know I said I'd have it all done in half an hour, but I'm a bit long-winded. <laughs> all right, we've done these. Let's get to this bit here. Having a few troubles with my mouse here. Okay, are you seeing that, Shannon? I am, yeah. So one of the other points to make with the cost of harvest weed seed control is it can be free, and the way to do that is is grazing. So grazing chaff dumps or potentially grazing chaff lines or chaff decks. We don't have the numbers on chaff lines and chaff deck um, grazing yet, but um, we can perhaps extrapolate a bit from grazing chaff dumps. So Ed Riggle is a consultant in Southwest WA. He has done some great research on the benefit to the sheep from grazing chaff dumps and did some economic um, comparison and found for the, the example that he did, as you can see there, the 2,000 hectare farm with 1,000 hectares of pasture at 9.5 DC. With the numbers from his grazing chaff dump study, found a $29,000 benefit per year to that farm, including the cost of the chaff cut and the nutrients and everything. And the other thing that sheep do is obviously they can redistribute some of those nutrients from the chaff dump or the chaff line or the chaff tram lines. Um, back out to the rest of the paddock. So grazing um, these things can be really effective, can be very good for the sheep, um, 
can obviously knock around a chaff line a bit so we get a bit more germination of weeds there and so on. Um, but only a few percent of the weed seeds survive passage through the room and so they don't spread too many weeds back out on the paddock. So that's how we can get free um, chaff, uh, harvest weed seed control, I should say. And the last thing I'd like to finish on is uh, who can afford a seed mill? Now I work for, or any of the tools really, anything with a capital cost. I work with a consultancy firm. I'm not a business consultant, but I um, rub shoulders with them every day. And every day I will often go into the, when they have clients in to do their annual review, I go into the boardroom and on the whiteboard will be this. And it's a, this is something they do with clients very often. And it's talking about the targets for their expenses. So the target for these different things is that we want operating efficiency. So all of our operating expenses, so you're thinking seed, fertilizer, chemicals, diesel, labor, and a lot of other expenses in there, all your sort of variable costs, you want to be less than 65% of your total income. So this is percent of total income. Drawings, your personal drawings need to be less than 10%. Your finance costs, so the interest on all of your uh, overdraft and machinery and so on, was 10%. Um, sorry, not interest on machinery, but in, uh, interest on other things, overdraft and, and perhaps your land and so on. Machinery, the depreciation figure wants to be less than 10% uh, of your total income. So normally use the... Uh, And take ten and use ten percent depreciation figure, and you want that to be less than ten percent of your total income, leaving a surplus of five percent or greater. And the people that are really making money are doing this on the right hand side. Their operating efficiency is a little bit better. Their drawings as a percentage of income is a little bit better. Finance percent is a little bit better. In fact, some of them have almost no finance costs. Um, machinery at 7% of, so the depreciation of machines at 7% of total income. Now that 7% machinery depreciation there is actually the average uh, of Western Australian farmers. So the plant farm benchmarks every year analyzes 500 businesses and the average machinery income ratio or that machinery depreciation as a percent of your total income averages 7%. So the point being is if you are already over 10% with your machinery, costs, spending another $100,000 on, um, on a, one of the mills is probably not a great idea. It's probably not for you at this point in time. It's probably better to keep your capital costs low, go to something like chaff lining or, or any of the other tools really, maybe not a chaff cart or a secondhand chaff cart might fit, but a, a, low, um, a lower cost tool for a while and then once the uh, things are in whack with your business, you're making money and your machinery to income ratio is a bit more favorable. They're the sort of farm businesses that really need to, that could focus on, on the higher capital cost items. So last thing I would finish on is keep an eye out for this. Looking at these things, Condinen Group, Ben White and Josh Jamelli and others have done a really good job of going out in the field, comparing all of these and, and done a, uh, a harvest, um, uh, report on the on all the different harvest weed seed control tools with a with a focus on on the on the four different mills. This is the the last slide. The Weed Smart Big Six, something we refer to all the time. It's not an exhaustive list, but this is the six big things that we talk about a lot that we think can make a big difference to managing herbicide resistant weeds using a diverse range of tools. And so, uh, keep it, the Big Six is what we what we base a lot of our weed smart activities on and the one we've talked about today is number six there, harvest weed seed control. So that's all for me, Shannon. I'm happy to answer any more questions. Sorry, I've gone a little bit over time and, um, and thanks everyone for participating today. I guess the message is, is that harvest weed seed control does come at a cost. The important thing is to work out what that cost is for your business and then, uh, and then make a, an informed decision that way. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. And thanks everyone for joining us. Um, this recording will actually be up on the WedSmart website next week and we'll also link um, that cost estimate 
up there as well. It is actually already on the Weed Smart website under the Harvest Weed Seed Control Big Six tab. Um, so uh, just to let you all know, we'll be having another Weed Smart webinar in two weeks time, same, same time, same place. And we'll be um, joined by Mark Congreve, who'll be talking about the future of using chemicals on farms. So hopefully we'll see you all then. Thanks everyone, bye.